Hello, I'm Jenny. And I'm Lola. Welcome to our video about the DNA. So, what is DNA? The DNA is a very large molecule. Its structure, however, is essentially quite simple. Despite its simplicity, the DNA contains the instruction for building a living organism. Without it, life would not be possible. The fact that the DNA of every human being is slightly different from everybody else's explains why we are all unique. Your DNA is different from the DNA of every other human being that has ever lived and ever will live. Identical twins are an exception. They have identical DNA. The DNA carries all this information, which is called genetic information. The genetic information is encoded in the DNA in the form of the genetic code. Do only humans have DNA? No. DNA exists in all known living organisms and also in some viruses called DNA viruses. There are two types of living organisms, eukaryotes and prokaryotes. All fungi, plants and animals, so humans as well, are examples of eukaryotes. Prokaryotes can either be bacteria or archaea. Archaea are similar to bacteria, but they have different ribosomes. What does DNA stand for? DNA is the abbreviation of deoxyribonucleic acid. And what does DNA look like? This graphic shows the structure of DNA. You can compare DNA to a rope ladder. There are two strands, just like the rails or styles of a ladder. These two strands are connected through rungs. We'll explain in a minute how exactly this works. The ladder is twisted in itself and therefore has the shape of a helix. This structure is called DNA double helix. Double because of the two strands and helix because of the spiral shape. And what does the DNA double strand consist of? The two strands consist of the same building blocks. Let's have a look at one of the DNA strands first. It is made up of sugar molecules, phosphate groups, and bases. One sugar molecule is always connected to one base. In DNA, this sugar is a deoxyribose, hence the name deoxyribonucleic acid. The unit of sugar and base is called nucleoside. Ah, so one sugar plus one base are a nucleoside. Exactly. A phosphate group is now attached to each nucleoside. The phosphate group is sometimes only called phosphate. It is bound to the sugar molecule of the nucleoside. Sugar, base and phosphate form one building block of the DNA, a so-called nucleotide. So a nucleoside plus one phosphate group is a nucleotide. Correct. In the DNA, there are only four different nucleotides. Sugar and phosphate of each building block are identical, so the difference lies only in the base. The DNA contains four different types of bases, adenine and thymine, cytosine and guanine. The sequence of these bases encodes the information that is stored in the DNA, the genetic information. And what do these four bases look like? These are the chemical structures of adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine. Oh, that looks quite complicated. Yes, it is. However, for the fundamental understanding of how DNA is composed, it's not so important to know these chemical structures. In our video, we will only use the following symbols for the bases. A for adenine, T for thymine, C for cytosine and G for guanine. If they are not important for our video, why did we present the chemical structures in the first place? We only wanted to show the chemical structures once, so that you get an idea of how the bases are constructed in reality. Because there are only four different bases in DNA, there are also only four different nucleotides. Many nucleotides are linked together to form a single line, a chain. This chain is called DNA polymer chain, 
or polynucleotide chain. This is easy to remember. Poly means many, so a polynucleotide chain is a chain made up of many nucleotides. Yes, and a single strand of DNA is simply a very long polynucleotide chain. Sugar molecules and phosphate groups form the backbone of the single strand of DNA, to which the bases are attached. But earlier you said the DNA was a double strand. The double strand of DNA consists of two single strands of DNA. These two strands are held together by base pairing. Base pairing? What is that? Each base of one strand is connected to one base of the other strand. But adenine can only be paired with thymine and cytosine can only be paired with guanine. Therefore, adenine and thymine are called complementary bases and cytosine and guanine are called complementary bases. That is why it's called complementary base pairing. In DNA, there are only two complementary base pairs. For example, adenine could normally never bond with cytosine. The two bases of a pair must fit like a key into a lock. Each key only matches one lock. Adenine only matches thymine and cytosine only matches guanine. This means that there are only four possible rungs between the two DNA strands of a DNA double strand. But why does this complementary base pairing exist? Why can't any base be bound to any other base? The principle of complementary base pairing is important. It means that if only one strand is existent, the other, complementary strand, can still be reconstructed. For every base, there is only one possible partner base. Here's a little quiz. I'll show you one strand of DNA and you'll tell me what the second strand looks like. The base sequence of this strand is T, C, C, G, A, G. Then the base sequence of the opposite strand is A, G, G, C, T, C. Correct. You were able to reconstruct the second strand based on the first strand. The second strand is complementary to the first strand because its nucleotide sequence is complementary. In our coming videos about transcription and translation, we're going to explain why this is so important. So far, we have learned about the structure of the DNA strands. Base pairing connects the strands. The DNA double strand is twisted in itself. It has a double helix structure. Exactly. But the DNA has another characteristic that we haven't talked about yet. The two strands of the double strand are antiparallel. Antiparallel? The two strands run in opposite directions. They are called antiparallel. To explain this, we'll have to take a closer look at the structure of the nucleotides. To be more precise, we have to take a closer look at the sugar molecules. This is the chemical structure of the sugar. That looks really complicated. Yes, but for what we want to explain, only the carbon atoms are important. They have the abbreviation C. As you can see, the sugar molecule has five carbon atoms. They are numbered, beginning on the right and going clockwise. They are called 1' prime carbon, 2' prime carbon, 3' prime carbon, 4' prime carbon and 5' prime carbon. Like we already mentioned before, one sugar molecule, one base and one phosphate group form a nucleotide. The base is always connected to the 1' prime carbon. The phosphate is always connected to the 5' prime carbon. Many nucleotides are linked together to form a DNA strand. To do this, the phosphate of one nucleotide is connected to the sugar of the next nucleotide. The phosphate of one nucleotide is bound to the 3' prime carbon of the sugar of the next nucleotide. So, in the chain, each sugar molecule is connected to two phosphates. Exactly. Each sugar has one phosphate bound to its 5' prime carbon 
and one phosphate bound to its 3' carbon. Here we see the left strand of a double strand of DNA. Wait, I thought the DNA was a double helix. But in a double helix there can't be a left and a right strand because the strands are twisted around each other. You're right. In the double helix there is not really a left and a right strand. It also doesn't matter which strand runs in which direction, as long as the two strands run in opposite directions. For easier understanding, however, we're going to call the strands left and right strand anyway. This sketch shows an exemplary left strand. As you can see, the 5' carbon of each sugar molecule is at the top of the molecule. The 3' carbon of each sugar is at the bottom. The right and the left strand of a DNA double strand are anti-parallel. They run in opposite directions. In the right strand, the 3' carbon is at the top and the 5' carbon at the bottom. This principle is also called opposite directionality. The top end of the left strand is the 5' end, the top end of the right strand is the 3' end. The bottom end of the left strand is the 3' end, the bottom end of the right strand is the 5' end. So, the double strand of DNA can be compared to a road. In one lane, the cars drive in one direction. In the other lane, the cars drive in the opposite direction. The two lanes are anti-parallel. If both lanes are blocked by a traffic jam, then many cars stand in two lines. Now, the drivers in one lane hold their arm out of the window. The drivers in the other lane do the same and hold the hands of the other drivers. The arms of the drivers are now the bases, and in the region where the hands meet, complementary base pairing is happening. We've learned that the DNA consists of two strands that run antiparallel to each other. The two strands are connected and form a double strand. This double strand is twisted to a double helix. However, the DNA is not usually existent in this form in the cells. Instead, it is packaged more compactly. This is shown in the sketch. The top row is the DNA double helix that we now know. In eukaryotic cells, this double helix is wound around special proteins called histones. Afterwards, it is packaged even more tightly. This structure is called chromatin or chromatin fiber. In our video about mitosis, we have already mentioned this. In eukaryotic cells, the DNA is existent as chromatin during interphase. If you don't know what interphase is, simply watch our video about mitosis. During the nuclear division, so during mitosis or meiosis, this chromatin fiber is condensed into a chromosome. Does one chromosome only consist of one chromatin fiber? That depends. In humans, for example, a single-stranded chromosome only contains one double strand of DNA, so only one chromatin fiber. A double-stranded chromosome contains two double strands of DNA. Each chromatid consists of one double strand of DNA. In a double-stranded chromosome, one double strand of DNA is the identical copy of the other. We've also explained this in our video about mitosis. But why is the DNA wound up like that? If the DNA is wound up, a lot of genetic information can be stored in a very small area. The uncoiled double strands of DNA of one human cell are approximately 2 meters long if you lay them in one line. The nucleus that contains them, however, is only 6 micrometers in diameter. This is equivalent to fitting 40 kilometers of very fine thread into a tennis ball. Wow! And a grown-up human being consists of about 100 trillion cells. That's a one with 14 zeros. Here is another way to illustrate this. If you laid all double strands of DNA of all cells of one human being in a line, this line would be 1000 times as long as the distance from the Earth to the Sun. A lot of DNA has to fit into very small nuclei. 
That is why every DNA chain is wound up. It now fits into the nucleus more easily. Moreover, it can't get tangled like this. We have finished explaining the structure of the DNA. To make it easier to understand, we will now compare the DNA to a book. The DNA is the book of life. The entire genome of the living organism or virus is the book. The genome is the entire genetic information of the cell. All chromosomes together form the genome. In a human, the genome consists of 46 chromosomes. One chromosome is one chapter of the book. One gene is one sentence. A gene is a section of the DNA that contains a useful piece of information. For example, the information for building a certain protein. Three DNA bases are one word. Three bases code for one amino acid, which we will explain in detail in one of our next videos about translation. In that video, we will also explain the function of amino acids and how the genetic code of the DNA is translated to form them. One DNA base is one letter. Our book of life only has four letters. A, T, C and G. This is the end of our video. We hope you liked it. If you want to learn how DNA is copied, click on this link for our video about DNA replication. If you want to learn what DNA is used for, click on the link for our videos about transcription and translation. You can also find the links in the description box below. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe. If you have any questions or concerns, let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you next time.